Well, good afternoon or good evening, I suppose I should say, and welcome to this edition of The Coach's Call. My name is Chris Whelan. I'm a director of the Wellington Centre of Business Excellence, based in Wellington, New Zealand, and operating across the country. In fact, in operating across the world in many cases. We help business owners to develop great teams, to fulfill their ambitions, to improve their productivity and their profitability. Uh, it keep them on track, really, the way great sports coaches build great teams. And uh, they do that through making sure there's focus, making sure there's accountability to fill the plans that they put in place. And of course, they get mentored along the way to achieve those plans. Coaching is sometimes hard to sum up in a, in a single sentence or two. But really what we do is to help business owners get the great return on investment that their effort deserves. And this is the key, have fun doing it. The Coach's Call is our way of, of showcasing the best of local and global business. Each week we meet with a business owner to discuss their business, what gets them, what makes them tick, get insights into that. And this week I'm absolutely delighted to be speaking to Colin Haberton. Colin is the director of a company called Relative Impact. <clears throat> Excuse me. Relative Impact has offices here in New Zealand. They have offices in Canada and in fact in South Africa. And they operate in about 10 countries around the world, 10 or 12 countries around the world. That's a number that I'm going to leave for Colin to either confirm or correct. Colin, absolutely a pleasure to have you. Welcome to the Coach's Call. Excellent, Chris. It's uh, great to spend time with you as always. Thanks for having me. Absolutely a pleasure. So, Colin, you and I have known each other now for, well, more than a decade. I guess the first time we met was probably, not met, but the first time I remember spending a lot of time with you was in Barcelona at, a, at right. an innovation summit. I mean, that was yeah. what, mid, mid-2000s. Tell us a little bit, tell the people that are watching this a little bit about who you are, how you got to do what you do, um, a little bit of background perhaps about yourself. Yeah, awesome. Thank you. Yeah, it is, uh, those are good memories from, from all those years ago where we met and certainly set up a friendship that's last, lasted through, through all these years. Um, to give a, a bit of background about myself, um, I am... Uh, resident of Cape Town in South Africa and um, kind of middle-aged, I suppose, 45 at this point in my life, um, married to an amazing woman called Gabrielle, who also happens to be my business partner. We have two kids, uh, Eden, who's 11, uh, our daughter, and then um, uh, Sam, who is seven years old. Right. We have, um, for the last 13 years, in fact, just prior to we met, uh, to, to when we met, Chris, um, Gabs and I, who'd known each other in our childhood, had uh, met, met up with each other again. And, and it was an intersection of, of, of not only a, um, of, of a time, but also a place in, in our uh, respective careers. Mm -hmm. uh, she's a, devel a development study specialist, and I'd come out of corporate with a, with a, a, a bleeding heart. <laughs> Um, for for wanting to to just see business become something that that was more than just about transactions, um, I, I come out of a background of loyalty programs. That was my that was my commercial background, strategic marketing, um, and I was fascinated by how being able to gather data about people's behavior, customers' behavior, um, and building incentive systems surrounding that uh, has such a powerful influence over over the way they might choose to, you know, choose to act um, mm. in relation to that, you know, the, the company's products and services that, that, um, that I was advising at that point in time. Um, but something, there was something in me that said, hang on a second, you know, this shouldn't only be for the benefit of a company, these, this thinking. And, and I mean, that was before behavioral economics be, became a very, um, <clears throat> well, the, the phenomenon it is today, the time that I was involved in loyalty programs is very much at the start of the boom that took place during the 2000s in that, in that area. Um, <clears throat> and in 2008, at this time when we met each other, I just had a sense that, that there, were, there were places to apply these same principles that could actually be um, for the benefit of all businesses, not just large corporates who could um, afford building incredible systems and programs that were going to support the loyalty of their customers. Um, so yeah, our business started really with that in mind to understand that um, business is about relationships. And if you build the right uh, systems of trust and establish the right connections of value, um, build that trust so that 
people start exchanging information that by connecting those ideas um, translates to innovation, translates to value creation. Right. Um, and that was the foundation of our business, which we applied to township businesses, um, where you know we put a good portion of our time. Um, and, um, and in a lot of the cases, it was kind of pro bono work that we really cared about. Mm. And then there were you know corporate companies that we were assisting uh, solving similar problems that uh, that effectively paid the bills. So that's so that's the way the way things started. And our intersection, your and my intersection, was one of those programs. Absolutely. You know, finding finding an incentive system to try and encourage um, uh, homeless people and people who who were in need to to register for certain services, whether it was you know health tests and so on, um, and finding vouchers, food vouchers that they could that they could use clothing vouchers and so on that could, um, you know, could give them, give them something back for taking appropriate, you know, behavioral action for the things that the city or, or community might be, you know, might be wanting to provide them with. Yeah, I mean, if I recall correctly, Colin, that was about incentivizing positive behavior um, and giving, right. giving great rewards for it. It's probably worth saying to some of the, the listeners and the watchers that are based here in New Zealand, that the term township is something that they, they may not understand. But if, for those of you that don't, it really means people living in very, very dire uh, socioeconomic circumstances. They're not in formal housing. Uh, they are literally surviving, sometimes not surviving, but literally surviving hand to mouth. So that's a, it's a very, very needy environment. And as Colin said, worked in that space. And then of course, he's also worked across in the corporate space. Colin, I mean, I made a comment when I introduced this call saying that you, Relative impact is operating, you know, you've got offices here in New Zealand, you've got offices in Canada and South Africa, operating in 10 or 12 countries. Are my numbers right? Yeah, they, they sound right. We, we <laughs> tend not to count the countries we operate in, but care about the clients that we serve. Um, we definitely do have offices in South Africa, New Zealand and, and Canada. And uh, our, our intention behind our business is really wanting to establish locations that can serve different parts of the world right um our our value proposition is very much around the understanding that being able to measure and manage and in some cases it even starts before that identify the impact that an organization is having or wishes to have um, on its stakeholders you know the communities in which it's which it operates um, is becoming increasingly important um, and, and, and our role in our clients' lives is to assist them in that process. Uh, what we intend to do, I mean, our objective as an organization is to want to amplify and catalyze that impact. And in the same way that you've been, you know, great help to us in coaching us through our um, stages of growth over the years, uh, we want to be coaching our clients through becoming the impact agents that they already are. You know, the bottom line is that Every organization has an impact, whether you're measuring it or not. The question is, is that impact positive or negative? And then the leading the question that leads from that is, what is the impact that you want to have? You know, what is the legacy that you want to leave behind? And even if it's not an intention to be impact orientated in that way, are you looking at the potential risks of not paying attention to the impact that you or other uh, companies um, and, and institutions might be having on your uh, business environment. Right. I mean, a, a question that, and you and I have discussed this previously, but a question that I think people may be interested in is how does that differ from, you know, people talk about the triple bottom line or the quadruple bottom line, but a lot of people in business are actually in there for the bottom line, and that's just show me the money. How does that, yeah. how does what imp impact investing or impact, relative impact does, how does that differ? Hmm. So they're related, um, and and I think that over the last, I would say, fifteen years, with mm -hmm. the whole expansion of of an understanding of the importance of corporate governance, right. and the fact that corporate governance is fundamentally connected to understanding your stakeholders and and being aware that no company operates in a vacuum is 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 is, is well known by sure. most organisations. Sure. Um, I think that what is what is lesser known at this point in time is that when it comes to engaging with those stakeholders and and applying this idea of a triple bottom line you know that you don't just care about your profits but you also care about 
the planet, you care about people because they are connected to how you make profit. Um, those have been difficult to quantify and therefore it's always been perceived somewhat difficult to measure and manage. Right. right. And what there's been a significant change in this environment in the last five to 10 years is that the international financial system has started to realize that if you are not managing and measuring your impact, particularly the risks around what that will do to your bottom line, yeah. um, your, your governance is questionable. Right. Um, are you pay, truly paying attention to the horizons that lie in the future? And I think there's been no two more um, um, evident uh, realities than the than in the last couple of years the impact of COVID and how it's how it's impacted the world in different ways how different governments have responded to that how different companies have responded to that and then of course climate change which is a perennial and progressive issue um, that is affect, affecting us personally and will continue to affect our businesses um, in a number of ways so is this disconnected from profit? No, absolutely not. It is fundamentally connected to the sustainability of a business being able to deliver on its profit objectives, but also the realization that the only way a business is going to be able to do that sustainably is by taking into account what role it plays and how it can actually play a proactive role in, um, in managing and amplifying uh, the, 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 the impact that it has. And when I say am amplifying, hopefully their positive impact rather than the negative. <laughs> sure, sure. So if I, I mean, I, I saw a report this morning, Colin, that uh, the national airline carrier in New Zealand posted a bit of a, a first, I think it was a first quarter or first half loss. It wasn't insignificant. And I guess COVID has had a massive impact on that. If I were to, you know, Greg Foran, I think is the, is the chief executive of, of uh, Air New Zealand. So if I was Greg Foran and I'm asking you, Colin, well, what are you, what, what's in it for me when I run my business? Why do I need relative impact? You know, mm -hmm. is, is, am yeah. I reporting to my shareholders? Am I reporting to my stakeholders? What am I doing? Yeah, yeah. Well, I think it's important to realize that your shareholders are one of your stakeholders, firstly, mm -hmm. and 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 they may be your most significant ones, particularly right. if if those shareholders or the allocators of capital to how you are able to run your business. Um, you know, that they're making decisions not only about you as a business, but also about the way that your business is likely to operate into the future. Mm. I mean, for, for an airline, for example, they, have, they, they, they are faced with a number of, of challenges. Um, cool. First and foremost, you've got the impacts that a microbe like COVID can completely paralyze their ability to operate. Sure. Um, I think in New Zealand, that obviously wasn't um, the case as in many other countries, you know, the airlines were still able to operate um, locally and to, and, and to an extent beyond that. But the one thing that an, an airline cannot get away from at the moment is the challenges that are placed against them in terms of their impact on the environment from a carbon, from a carbon footprint perspective. Yeah. Now, I don't believe that just because for example, an airline happens to have a carbon footprint, that that necessarily needs to be a negative, um, um, a ne negative aspect of the way they do business. There's many businesses that have carbon footprints. I think it's sure. about how you acknowledge that. It's about how you are transparent about that and then how you start to partner with your, with your clients in this case of how you start to offset what those impacts are going to be. Right. And take right. a country like New Zealand, if you're not going to get into an airplane and fly to another destination, <laughs> it could actually take you a hell of a long time to get to where you need to go, right? It could take a while. And, um, and, uh, and, and Zoom does, does a good job of connecting us like it is doing today, but there is still not going to be many alternatives to, to being able to meet people face to face. And obviously, airlines don't only ship people around the world, they ship a, a significant amount of other products and services as well. So, so my answer to, 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 to a CEO of an airline um, would be, do you know what your impact is? Sure. Um, are there ways that you can mitigate what your current operational impact might be, the negative aspect, and how can you become a leader um, in influencing the, the behavior of other airlines, uh, influencing the behavior of your customers, and looking at innovative opportunities to partner with them. So instead of seeing your business as a series of transactions that result 
in what sits on your bottom line, look at them as relationships that can translate into innovation and creating shared value um, far more into, you know, far beyond, you know, your next set of financial results. Sure. Well, that's, I mean, that's, that's great. I'm now going to throw a bit of a curveball at you because we've spoken about mm. business. <laughs> I've promised uh, listeners and, and viewers of, of the coaches call that I'll also tap into people's insights. And I want to ask you a question, Colin, over mm. your professional life, what's the greatest lesson you've learned? What is, and, and it might be, you know, in victory, it might be in adversity, but what, what's the greatest lesson that you could share with people this, this afternoon? Um. I suppose the biggest lesson I've learned, and it's not it's it's not a virtue of mine, is patience. You know, <laughs> uh, I think that I think that to be patient, and to and to take that time when things perhaps are not moving at the pace that you would like or would, or the way that you would expect, is to just take a look around and reflect on what is happening around you. Um, because by, by being patient, by being settled in, in where you find yourself right now, not only can you discover new opportunities, but I think you also have the opportunity, certainly it's been my experience, um, that it's refined my thinking and, and uh, in some cases reduced uh, the, the size of, 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 of the mistakes that can be made with poor decision making when you're not taking the time to think things through carefully. Right. Yeah, I think that, that probably makes sense. I've certainly seen in, in my business environment, some people operate much quicker or they tend to process quicker. Now, I don't know if that's a mm. patience thing, but the challenge there is they can end up leaving people behind uh, if they don't take the time to reflect. So following on from that, I mean, any failures that you've ever had, how have they shaped who you are today? Yeah, yeah, that's, a, that's an interesting one. Um, <clears throat> so I suppose... I suppose one of one of my failures. Um, I'll go back to to my my academic career. Right. I um, I found myself choosing choosing a degree. I chose to do social science because it gave me the opportunity to do commercial subjects and humanity subjects. I had this um, very um, uh, romantic idea of doing a PPE. Right. right, philosophy, politics, and economics. Um, right. I don't think you could choose a more kind of colonial degree if you tried. But um, <laughs> anyway, it it it, um, it it was very interesting, but didn't try to translate into a profession. Um, right. I, I spent I spent a lot of time, you know, reading very complicated books about philosophy, but walked away from it feeling somewhat um, short on on skill set. Right, and. Um, and I did my honors and, um, and I, I didn't, I didn't pass, you know, my, my honors degree. I, I can't say that I tried very hard. In fact, I probably tried very hard not to pass it and I, and I succeeded. So, it's, it's, so it was a success of, in, in my failure. Right? <laughs> but that left me in a place where um, I walked away from university. I was um, looking at my mates who were qualifying as accountants and lawyers and doctors and doing, doing all the right things. And, um, and then just by a, a set of really, um, you know, serendipitous circumstances, got involved in working for a, a marketing company that ultimately translated to this career in loyalty programs, as I was, as I was mentioning to you. Mm. And, um, and, and, and what that drove me towards, the, the feeling of not really achieving what I felt was possible, like what my potential was, is much later on in my career, I chose to do uh, some postgraduate degrees. I did my master's in information and knowledge management, which gave, you know, a theoretical basis to this phenomenon that I was involved in of, of, of being involved in, in loyalty programs. Um, and then uh, went on to, to, to complete a, a very painful um, a PhD that took way too long for my, for my family's liking, uh, right. but I wasn't going to give up. And the reason why I wasn't going to give up is because it was something I knew I wanted to do. I knew it was going to add value to, to the work that I was doing and the way that, that I was thinking about things. You know, it was going to give me depth to, to my ability to assist other people and, and, and what our business was all about. Mm. But that initial failure of not having direction um, really did force me to, to make sure that if I was going to be investing that time again, 
um, and and completing completing my studies ultimately was also a way of you know getting those skeletons out of my closet. It's it's uh, yeah. I mean, sometimes out of adversity, we we learn the biggest lessons and we figure out what really drives us. On that note, Absolutely. in, in it, talking about your business, I'm just conscious that we we don't want to you know talk all about business, but talking about your business, talking about what you've learned. Do you have a business or even, a, I guess, a personal role model? And, and who is that? And if you do, and, and then why? Mm. Yeah, I think um, <clears throat> I think I have I, I have a number of of role models for, you know, for different reasons. Um, and I think that, and yeah, I, I, I suppose, you know, as a, I'm, I'm a person of faith and, and, and my first point of reference would be, would be the Jesus Christ we, we read about in the, we can read about in the Bible, but, um, but my, um, my, my experience of that has been far more personal. I think as, um, as a role model, if I, if I under, if, and, and if I've analyzed over the years in terms of what the relational principles of, of how he went about his work um, and the impact that he had in a very short space of time when, when his ministry that's documented in the Bible was, um, was, um, um, you know, is described in, in various accounts as, as, as a lot of us know. Uh, I, th I think what what I'm struck by is in as, as as a person, he was connecting with ordinary people, um, and and achieving incredible things. And in most cases, it was actually those incredible things had to come from the people that he was connecting with. You know, they had to right. they had to believe that it was possible. Right. Um, and 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 I think that that. Yeah, that, that 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 is pretty fundamental for me is to is to learn that that you know from from the belief system that I come from, with Jesus being you know um, God incarnate in 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 on 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 our planet, there is there is a lot to learn from from the way that he interacted with people, not just the things that he did, but certainly the things that he said was was the way that that he lived. Right. And the impact that that's had on people over the centuries, the real essence of, of Christianity, you know, sacrificial love um, is, 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 is a principle to, that I try to apply as often as I can. I can't say that I get it right. Um, but I do think it's, it's really the fundamentals of what is happening in the world right now. And, and, the, and the fact that the world is realizing that if we're not going to pay attention to the interests of the planet and other people, um, we're actually um, shouldn't be surprised about the negative um, impacts that that's going to have on our lives. Well, wow. yeah, the thing that strikes me, Colin, is that, uh, well, I mean, that's, that's a great role model, of course, and so it was a great uh, motivation, but it strikes me that you, you're going way beyond business there. That's, uh, that's almost putting, dare I say it, it's putting purpose at the center of your of your business and center of well, even in the name relative impact that is that is a uh, yeah that, that's an interesting interesting way to look at things the final question that i had for you was really how can i as a as a business person in new zealand how can i as a, as a business owner in new zealand serve you and serve your interests serve your clients interests you know and as i, say, I know you've got offices here in canada and south africa how can i add value to your to your business yeah, well, Chris, you you, you already do. Um, I think um, the, the the fundamental reason why why I've always appreciated your your friendship and and why you know when when our business started to <clears throat> to move in the direction it has, why we wanted your counsel was because of our relationship. You know, if I think about those early days, I think about our conversations that. That we had in in Barcelona, and I still clearly remember your encouragement for for what we were doing back then. I have to say, and Colin, I interrupt you. I I remember walking down Las Ramblas and having a fantastic <laughs> juice in Barcelona. But okay, I'm glad you remember more than that. <laughs> yeah, there were a few of those as well. You know, I mean, if you're in Barcelona, you you, you better make sure you do that, and you've got to get to the now camp. You know, exactly. Um, but. Um, 
but yeah, I mean, it actually comes down to that relationship, Chris. It comes down to the trust that, that we forged a long time ago. And because of that, <clears throat> by being in a place where we now may find ourselves in very different parts of the world, um, there is no separation in, in, in how we are connected. Mm. Um, and and certainly from from the experience that 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 you bring to to an organization like ours, you know, knowing your background in consulting and the way that you've advised organizations of many shapes and sizes in different parts of the world, you know, that is that pract pragmatically speaking, we have a friendship, yes, that, that's based on that, you know, based on that trust. But mm. but you have something that 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 I value. <clears throat> And um, it, it is your opinion and your experience. You know, asking the question, well, what, what could you do for us in the future? Well, I think it's about being able to see the horizons that we don't see. You know, it's about being able to identify the doors that we might not know um, uh, where to find or how to open, uh, which you've done for us um, in, in a number of cases. And I think it's about walking, you know, walking a journey uh, together where I know that you understand who we are, what we do, and why we do it. And, 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 and I think that that question of the why, you spoke about purpose. I think that, um, you know, I think that we have many purposes as, as people and as organizations, but, I, but, that, but, but that burden needs to be discovered. Sure. Um, and, that's, and that's why we are so excited about the work that we do. And you help us with this. Um, because while we're helping other organizations to discover how we can help them measure and manage their impact, we're turning to you and saying, help us being able to see the things that we don't see. Right. Um, and, and, and that's what I've learned from, from the relationships that we've built as a business and me as a person over, over the years that, that I've been happily on this planet. <laughs> um, yeah, there's, there, 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 there's no greater asset than, uh, than, than, than having your friends and family being able to do life with you. Well, thank you very much. It's a, it's a great privilege for, it's a great privilege from us as well. I mean, it's, it's, it really is. Colin, I'm gonna try, and, I'm gonna try and, and sum up a little bit of what, what I've heard. The first mm -hmm. thing that I've got written down in front of me is, is that business is not all about transaction, right? And I think I heard you say that already. It's about far more than transactions about, I heard you use the word trust a number of times. It's about building relationships of trust mm -hmm. In terms of what relative impact does globally, it's about knowing the impact that any organization, whether it be in the profit, uh, the for-profit or the not-for-profit, potentially in the government space, what impact they're having on their community, are they fulfilling, I guess, their purpose, um, and how do they measure that? And that's an important thing, because if you don't measure it, you know, what is uh, the old thing? If you don't measure it, you can't manage it. So I've heard you say that. I've heard you talk about the triple bottom line and, and even beyond that. You know, making sure that you're actually, as a person, but also as a business, you're still a part of the community. One thing I, I, I did, uh, I almost chuckled internally when you said that one of your biggest lessons is, is about being patient, because I suspect if you talk to people around me, they might think that I've got that. I, I still need to learn that lesson, so that's uh, something I'll take <laughs> away. And then, and this really did strike home with me, Colin, your, the failure that you've taken and not completing your, your honors degree, I think you said it was, and then turning that around and saying, you know what, I don't ever want that feeling again. That feeling or that thing in the back of my head is going to drive me forward as taking you on to great heights. I, I think that's a, it's a great place to wrap up. I know that the work that you do and what you've described this afternoon is, is really impactful, excuse the pun, and, and I look forward to working with you and to, and to seeing how you grow both, as I say, here, South Africa, Canada, across Europe, across North and South America. All the very best, and thank you for joining us on the Coach's Call this afternoon. Uh, it's been a pleasure, Chris. Excellent.